Hey folks, Mike Naso here with this 11.30 p.m. Eastern Time update on Wednesday night, September 6, 2023. Boy, do we have a lot of activity out there. When we take a look at the Eastern Pacific and the Atlantic, on the left side of your screen, we have a hurricane in the Eastern Pacific that is one of the best-looking hurricanes I've ever seen in my life. This is Hurricane Hova. It is flawless. It is now a Category 5. It has strengthened about 80 knots in a very quick 24-hour period. That is remarkable. Absolutely stunning. Beautiful in all quadrants, and it has what we call the dreaded pinhole eye. And uh, that means with that low barometric pressure, those winds right around that eye wall are at least 160 miles per hour. We'll talk about Hova. We have Hurricane Lee, which has uh, gotten better organized here in the central Atlantic. It is forecast to become a hurricane, if not a Category 5, pretty darn close as it moves northeast of the Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico and probably just east of the Turks, Caicos, and the Bahamas. Although its long-term track is still a little uncertain, we're hopeful that it will avoid a direct landfall. But nonetheless, it's going to be a very powerful hurricane and possibly bring high surf and swells everywhere from the Greater Antilles, the Bahamas, Bermuda, and the Eastern Seaboard. And on the right side of your screen, we have this tropical invest area near the Cape Verde Islands, which to me looks pretty darn close to being a depression or even a tropical storm. It's bursting very well, and we will likely see this develop and move towards the west-northwest. So let's talk about Hurricane Lee first. Here's the latest on Lee as of 11 p.m. Atlantic time. Hurricane Lee was at 15.4 north, 47.7 west, winds up to 80, so it's a solid Category 1. It's moving west-northwest at 14. It should become a major hurricane by Friday, a Category 4 or 5 by the weekend. And by the early part of next week, it should be north of Puerto Rico, east of the Turks and Caicos, and south of Bermuda, moving very slowly. Notice this is Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. This is not a quick-moving hurricane, and it might even slow down towards the end of that track. And so we will deal with an extremely large and powerful hurricane somewhere there in the western Atlantic. Now where it goes from there is still uncertain, but we do know one thing, it is going to be intense. This is the upper level anticyclone that's building over the top of it, anticyclone being high pressure aloft, which basically is anticyclone, so it moves the opposite way of the low pressure. So the hurricane has a counterclockwise low pressure, and the anti-cyclone high pressure over the top of it is clockwise, which ventilates it and allows strengthening. So it has a very favorable upper-level wind pattern to follow it towards the west-northwest, and as well as very, very hot water. So strengthening, not an issue. These are the European ensembles, and we did see some trend today of a little bit further west. Not quite into the Bahamas, but way too close for comfort. Even though the track still shows a turn to the north, this is very slow motion. I mean, you're talking 168 hours, 240 hours, still just within this area here to the southwest of the island of Bermuda and to the northeast of the Bahamas. So again, if we're dealing with a Category 4 or 5 hurricane, especially a large size hurricane, we're going to have beach erosion, propagating swells, rip currents, the whole nine yards and we're going to see how close these tracks make it towards the eastern seaboard, New England, and the Canadian Maritimes. The GFS ensembles as of 18Z, they've trended further to the southwest as well, and we just got to watch that because if they take the southern edge of all these ensemble models, that is pretty close to the Bahamas. So even if it would turn, we don't want it to get too close because then you could be in tropical storm or hurricane winds, you could have uh, impacts on the Outer Banks and New England and uh, areas of Nova Scotia and Newfoundland. So it's going to remain a couple of days out until we could really pinpoint the exact track. We know through the next 72 hours it should remain northeast of the U.S. Virgin Islands. Here's the infrared satellite imagery of Hurricane Lee. Not a well-defined eye yet, but it's bursting. It looks like it's uh, in the formative stages. It should take off by Thursday night, Friday. And once it does, watch out. It has a lot of moisture to deal with, this large moisture envelope. And that's telling me that this is not only going to be a strong hurricane, but possibly a large hurricane. You can see on the left side of the screen areas there of the Lesser Antilles. So again, we don't think it'll make a direct landfall, 
But as the Hurricane Center noted, you got a 1 in 4 chance of having some tropical storm wind impacts in areas there of the Northern Islands. So 1 in 4, you know, something to watch. Eric Webb on Twitter did point out that there is a uh, southwest and slowing trend on the GFS ensembles over the last few days, bringing it much closer to the Bahamas and slower. Again, if steering currents get weak, this thing could kind of slow down before it would eventually get kicked northeast or even north, and that's why we'd have to watch it so carefully. The key messages from the National Hurricane Center on Hurricane Lee, Lee is forecast to become a major hurricane. That's a Category 3, 4, or 5 by early Friday, with the core moving north of the northern Leeward Islands, the Virgin Islands, and Puerto Rico into early next week. But there is the potential for tropical storm conditions, and interest should monitor the future updates to Lee's forecast. As I mentioned before, swells generated by Lee, that's going to hit the U.S. Virgin Islands, the British Virgin Islands, Puerto Rico, Hispaniola, the Bahamas, Bermuda, all by the weekend. And these swells are likely to cause life-threatening surf and rip current conditions, so watch out. Again, the wind probabilities, you guys have a chance here in the Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico. You're not likely to get tropical storm winds, but you could. You could. So again... That would be sometime by later on in the weekend, so you have a couple more days to watch before crunch time here. We have another system. This is Invest 96L. This is behind Hurricane Lee, very close to the uh, Cape Verde Islands there. Forecast, if it does develop, it's got a high chance from the National Hurricane Center to move west-northwest and then eventually kind of curve to the north out here. But there could be some interaction with Hurricane Lee because it could affect the ridging of high pressure to the north of Lee. So we're going to watch very carefully right now when we look at the satellite. This looks impressive. I think this is probably close to a depression, if not a tropical storm. is consolidating. It looks it's got that shape. And then there's Hurricane Lee on the left side. So this is Lee. If this becomes a tropical storm, by the way, this would be Margo. So... We'll wait and see if uh, this becomes Margo. And then this area here, leaving Africa, another strong tropical wave getting ready to leave. So the hurricane season's pumping on, and it'll probably be active even after these systems. So it's a lot to watch. Here's another look at that. Look at how th this system here is obviously very close to being a tropical storm, in my opinion. I think it looks like one. As long as there's low pressure underneath that, it's at least a depression, if not a storm. It's got to be close, and I know the National Hurricane Center is watching it very, very closely. You'll see the odds of development go up overnight, overnight uh, Wednesday into Thursday morning. And then there's that wave I talked about still over Africa again. We don't want any of these to develop because you never know when one's going to ride low and head for the Caribbean islands and points further west. I had to touch on HOVA. Hurricane HOVA in the eastern Pacific as of 11 p.m. Eastern Time it was at 15.7 north, 113.0 west, winds up to at least 160 miles per hour, 929 millibars. Category 5 hurricane moving west-northwest at 15. It could strengthen even more, maybe 175 miles per hour. We don't have an airplane flying around it. Oh, I would give my right hand, well, not my right hand, I'd give something right now to have an airplane flying around in that hurricane to see just what those winds are because they could be a heck of a lot stronger than 160 and I'll show you why. Look at this satellite. Look at it as the sun goes down in the Pacific Ocean. Watch on the right eye wall the sun glaring off of the right eye of the hurricane. Within this little area here you would have winds of at least 160 miles per hour with higher gusts and that's just an estimate. So it could be even stronger than that. Perfect hurricane. Beautiful. Look at the infrared. The cold cloud tops. When you see grays, you're not just seeing red, you're seeing grays. That is a sign of a strong hurricane. Very, very dangerous Hurricane Hova in the Pacific. So we're going to watch all of these systems. Hova is going to move out, but there could be swells. A hurricane that strong, you could see swells all the way up to the Baja. Hurricane Lee, destined to be a monster hurricane. It should remain north of the islands in Puerto Rico. And the thinking generally is, is that we should probably get this to the north, but we cannot rule out impacts further down the line. And then this area near the Cape Verde Islands, our invest, looks like it's going to become a tropical cyclone. 
and even more after that. So a lot to deal with in the tropics. I'm Mike Naso. I'll talk to you next time with more on Hurricane Hova and all our other systems out there.